The Slavs Once they lived in one place and spoke the same language. But over time, they spread out and settled huge territories from the Baltic to the Balkans. Today the Slavs are dozens of different peoples with different cultures, languages and countries. But what actually unites them? Seriously, culture and similar languages are kind of abstract. There must be something more concrete. What really connects all Slavs? What if I told you nothing does? If you look at genetics, we'll find that, say, a Czech is actually much closer to a German than to a Serb. So why are Czechs and Serbs grouped together as Slavs? That doesn't really make sense, which means that, from a genetic point of view, Slavs might not even exist at all. This is Slavik, here we talk about Slavs. If you watch this video to the end, you'll find out who the Slavs really are, what they have in common and whether they even exist. Let's dive in. So, who are the Slavs? To answer that, we need to trace their development from the very beginning all the way to today. So, let's take a quick look at history. Most historians and archaeologists believe that the Slavs' homeland was in what is now Poland, Belarus and Ukraine. That's where the ancient Slavs lived. According to archaeological data, their ethnic community had formed no later than the second half of the 4th century. These people lived in small family clans, farming and raising livestock. They didn't have writing, so the first mentions of the Slavs appeared in Byzantine chronicles of the 6th century. They spoke of the Sklaveni and the Antis, peoples who lived somewhere between the Dnieper and the Vistula rivers. These weren't empires or states, but tribal unions that shared similar traditions and beliefs. Now let's jump to the era known as the Migration Period. The Roman Empire is collapsing, the Huns and Evers are roaming the steppes, Germanic tribes are moving west, and all of Europe is literally on the move. These migrations opened up vast, sparsely populated lands. The Slavs experienced a population boom and began settling huge new territories. Some went west, where the Poles, Czechs and Slovaks would later appear. Others went south to the Balkans, becoming the ancestors of Serbs, Croats and Bulgarians, and a third group moved east, where the ancient Rus civilization emerged. It all seems simple. Once the ancient Slavs lived together, then they spread out and became different modern nations. So they must all share some common DNA, a single Slavic gene that connects them all, right? After all, they came from the same group of tribes. And surely, modern genetics can just find that Slavic gene and tell us who's Slavic and who's not. Well, as you probably guessed, it's not that simple. I think you already understand that the Slavs didn't just live and migrate on their own. They moved into new lands where other peoples were already living. Over time, the Slavs mixed with the local populations, passing on their language and culture. As a result, new peoples emerged, those we now call Slavic. But their Slavicness was mostly about language and culture, not genetics. Take the Bulgarians, for example. This nation appeared in the early Middle Ages as a result of the merging of the Bulgars, Slavic tribes and the native Balkan peoples, mainly Tracens. The Bulgars themselves were Turkic tribes, quite distant from the Slavs genetically. That's why under our video about Bulgaria, you can find comments like Bulgarians aren't Slavs at all. By the way, Bulgaria has a fascinating history, so we recommend checking out that video. And yet, Bulgarians are considered a South Slavic people because they speak a Slavic language and share Slavic culture. The Bulgarian case isn't unique. I often come across bold claims about almost every Slavic nation. Russians aren't Slavs. Poles aren't Slavs, Serbs aren't Slavs, and so on. And in each case, it's pretty much the same story. For instance, Northern Russians are genetically very close to other Northern peoples like Bols or finno ugri groups. Meanwhile, Southern Russians are closer to Ukrainians, Belarusians and Poles. Some scientists even say that Southern Russians are genetically closer to Poles than to Northern Russians. Strange, right? So. The Slavic gene pool is extremely diverse and varies from region to region. When the ancient Slavs arrived in new territories, they turned the locals into Slavs by passing on their language and culture while also mixing genes. That's why it's impossible to point to one specific Slavic gene. Or is it? Now we're getting to the most interesting part 
and soon everything will become clear. But before we continue, just a quick reminder. You can support us on Patreon or right here on YouTube. We post new videos every week and your support really helps us out. Alright, back to our topic. The Slavic gene. What does genetics actually say about it? At first glance, it might seem like geneticists should be able to tell Slavs apart from non-Slavs. After all, we already compared the genetics of different peoples. So it seems logical that we could find something common among all Slavic nations. A Slavic gene, right? Well, not exactly. The thing is, genetic studies populations, not nations. And that's a big difference. A nation is mostly about language, culture and identity. Your DNA doesn't say Croat, Spaniard or Mexican. It doesn't say anything at all. It's just millions of symbols, patterns that scientists try to interpret and connect. For example, for a long time, genetic branches R1A and I2 were considered Slavic genes because they were found in most Slavic peoples. But later, scientists discovered the same haplogroups among Germans, Indians and Norwegians. That's when it became clear that you can define a nation by a single genetic marker. That would be like trying to describe a person's whole appearance by only looking at their nose size. Doesn't make much sense, right? At the same time, as I mentioned, scientists can find certain patterns shared by different groups of people. But we have to remember that these are just broad statistical trends. They don't really say much about any specific individual. To make it clear, imagine this. We could easily calculate the average ear size for any group of people and find some general tendencies. But if you started measuring ears with a ruler to decide who truly belongs to a certain nation and who doesn't, that would be pure pseudoscience and a terrible idea. And one more thing. Genetics is still a young science. We're only at the early stages of understanding it. Scientists keep discovering new patterns, conducting studies and forming new hypotheses. As strange as it might sound, it's actually easier for a geneticist to tell which family a person comes from than what nationality they are. That's because a family is a biological concept. It's about specific shared traits. A nation, on the other hand, is a vast mix of ever-changing genetic sequences that vary from person to person. It's an abstract, social idea rather than a biological one. So, the answer to our original question isn't simple. Slavs do share a lot in common genetically. We could say they are related peoples. But at the same time, there is no single Slavic gene. Throughout history, people have mixed so much that within any of us you can find roots from almost anywhere. All those layers make up a human being a blend of countless populations. And if you talk about Slavicness, it's just one of many threads woven into that complex tapestry. But Slavs definitely exist. I mean, at the very least, I'm sitting right here in front of you. I have no idea what my genes look like, but I live in a Slavic country and speak a Slavic language. And that's more than enough. So, in the end, to avoid confusion, we just shouldn't mix up genetics and nations. They belong to completely different fields. That's why, if you look it up on Wikipedia, you'll see that Slavs are simply people who speak Slavic languages. And that's it. No other criteria. Wait a second. What about DNA ancestry test? There are tons of commercial tests that claim they can determine your exact ethnic background down to decimal points. Sounds great. You send a saliva sample and they send back precise results. 49% Slovenian, 12% Romanian, 20% Montenegrin, 19% Don Cossack. But is that real? Or is it a scam? Well, the truth is, yes, they can make those numbers up. Not long ago, a video went viral online. A guy sent a DNA sample to one of those companies. A few weeks later, he got a detailed ancestry breakdown. Only the DNA didn't belong to him. It belonged to his pet lizard. Yes, he sent in lizard saliva and the company replied that his lizard was 51.3% Ashkenazi Jewish. That's because these tests don't actually identify your nationality. They just compare your DNA to every genetic profiles of different populations. In the end, it's all just statistical guesswork. Very rough, very general 
and not to be taken too seriously. So don't waste your time trying to find the true Slavic genes or anyone else's for that matter. Being Slavic is about culture, language and identity. Leave a like, subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video.